This is episode number 71 of the Homeowner Show. Whether you're DIY or looking to hire, we're here to help you find the best information and options for you and your home. My name is Kevin Hackett, and here with me is Craig Williams. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Homeowner Show. We're glad that you could tune in, dial in, tap that button, whatever. <laughs> dial in. Do people dial? <laughs> Have you, have you seen that video of the the dad that uh, gives his kids uh, five minutes to dial a number yes. on an old rotary phone? Yeah, they can't do they it. They can't do it. They can't figure it's it hilarious. out. Hilarious. Yeah, it's pretty hilarious. <laughs> yeah, it's it's one of my favorite things on YouTube. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. If you haven't seen it, anyway, well, I guess we could we could link that up in the show notes. Yeah, I can put it up there. Make, make that happen, Kevin. Yeah, it's 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 good stuff. My my mother in law actually still has an old rotary phone that does it um, work. It, it does. It actually does work. Um, but my kids love to play with it whenever oh, they okay. go over to her house. Yeah. And they don't know what it is, but they <laughs> they love to play with it. My, dude, my kids' favorite thing is the typewriter. They think it's oh, the most yeah. fascinating thing in the world. Like we, yeah. we have a really old one, and it still works. Do you, do you have an electric one or one that you have no. to press the thing? Oh no, it's got the slide yeah. register and everything. Yeah, we've got two at my at my parents' house. And they've got one of each. Yeah. So we're making ourselves sound way older than we are. <laughs> so true. My, my parents had it in college. That does that help? <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe they. Okay. You know. I, I will tell you. I do remember when typewriters came out that you could type a, a line before mm-hmm. pressing enter, and it would, and it would then print that on the paper. And oh, okay. You go to the next line, and you could type out a whole line. Before, and it Did would, it have like a little screen? Yes. That, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I still remember it was a really big deal when they came out with the ones that could delete. Yeah. Yeah. Had like a backspace. Like, yes. That was a big deal. Yeah. So, and rightly so. Yeah. <laughs> and look at where we're at now. Yeah. Predictive text has gone. Take that white out. Yeah. <laughs> no kidding. Man, how you doing? Yeah, I'm I'm doing pretty good. Yeah. I'm, I'm having to play... Inspector Clouseau in my front yard right now, but that's all right. And it's very much Inspector Clouseau because I have little to no idea what I'm doing. I'm, I'm looking for a leak. Okay. There's been a puddle that's been accumulating in a specific spot. Um, Maybe your dog's just peeing a lot. You know, that was actually my thought because it's right by a tree. <laughs> oh, no. Like, and I, like, for a week, I was like, these goofy dogs are just, have just decided that this is, this is the, this is the line in the sand. This is it. This is the tree. Yep. We're all going to mark it. That this tree is going down. So, <laughs> but no, it, there's a leak in the ground and it, yeah. it's gotta be, it's gotta be a little one. And so, but maybe it's a natural spring. That'd be cool. Yeah. Um, I'd be down with that. Yeah. I just need to figure out where to send the water. Um, drill a, drill a, a line. Put a windmill on it. I, okay, I could do that. It's right by my house is the problem, and yeah. so I've got to I've got to figure out what's going on. It's probably a leak. It's probably <laughs> it's a leak. probably not a spring. And, well, this isn't the first time this has happened either. We've had other ones Be, because because the house is so far away from the road and the mm. water the main water lines down by the road. I mean, like just leaks every once in a while because tree roots and cars driving on top of stuff. I mean, like just leaks happen. Yeah. Um, but this one, I mean, like it's. It just, it seems to be getting a little bit bigger and a little more aggressive. And so we got to figure out what's going on. I'm, I may end up having to, you know, phone in to Jim over at JC's leak detection if I can't figure it out. The, the problem is, is that I'm pretty good at plumbing. Okay. I'm not, I'm not great at a whole bunch, but I'm pretty good at plumbing. Yeah. I just don't enjoy it. it so it's, it's a, yeah, it's, it's a, a lot of work. It, it is. And like, and, and so like the, I have to rationalize it in my brain because I go like, look, stupid, you don't enjoy this, but it's really expensive to have it done. You know that you're capable, and if you just spent the time, you could actually fix it. But then the other side of my brain is like, look, dummy. <laughs> you don't have the time, and it's got to get done now. Right. Yeah. So. That's the way it goes. So, basically, it's a no-win situation where I'm a moron no matter what I pick. Just call J- JC. Yeah. Call him. I probably will. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's an interesting time around my house as well. I mean, we, we've kind of, uh, you know, Christmas has come and gone, which means we now have exponentially more toys than we did have. I told your wife to stop buying you so many. Well, but I keep, you know, playing with them. So, (laughs) but you were a good boy. (laughs) That's right. I, I did all the good things. Anyway. Uh, so, we we've gone through a really 
interesting process of purging. Nice. Um, I'm a big fan of purging. Yeah, yeah, and and we are too. It's just it's it's not that we're just the ones making the decisions. We're we're actively assisting our kids through that process, and so. Like, and that's just going to take forever. It would. It does. It I just re- sneak in in the middle of the night and take what I want. <laughs> We've done that before, <laughs> and it and it works. But we really want to kind of teach them. You know, you've got new toys. There are people out there that don't have toys, and you mm-hmm. should, you know, help them out and give them the stuff that you don't play with anymore, or that you're too big to play with anymore. Right. And so it's just a whole cry fest of no, oh, it's my favorite toy that I haven't played with in <laughs> a year. Uh, you know, and. uh so that that's been interesting. I just took um a god, I took so much stuff to Goodwill today. It was ridiculous. <laughs> um and uh so lots of stuff we purged. And then the other thing that's kind of that was good today is we had a water softener guy come and uh kind of just check our system and you know I I, I it just reminds me how important maintenance is yeah. on home things that sometimes are just out of sight, out of mind. And, you know, we've got a reverse osmosis system as well. So underneath they've got the filters and, and the three canisters underneath and all those need to be replaced and everything. So it's all good. Everything's running good. We didn't have any issues. I didn't um, replace anything. No, we replaced all the filters. Oh, okay. And, uh, are those actually- expensive? Yeah, well, I mean, they're not cheap. I mean, so three filters. Um, I if I, I I did it last year myself, and it was sixty bucks. Okay. Um, I had him do it as eighty, yeah, well. so it's really worth him doing it. Yeah. Um, there's also a filter that we have on the outside of our house. It's a pre sediment filter mm-hmm. before everything the, comes in. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know. I've never changed. I've never even looked inside that that uh, container, that canister. Uh, but it's huge. It's like it's twenty inch. It's a twenty inch filter. Oh my gosh! It's huge. It's massive. Yes. And uh, this thing, we we took it off, and he looked at it, and he said, "We didn't install this." <laughs> he said, I, "I don't know who installed it. Maybe it was here before we even installed. Who knows?" Um, but it was brown. Hmm. Like, and I, I'm not talking like kind of brown i'm like it looked like it looked like a tree limb (laughs) like like someone had stuck a tree limb inside this canister yeah and so i mean we've lived there for two and a half years right i haven't touched it and i would be shocked if it was touched for the three years previous to that (laughs) so anyway i mean stuff like that that you know maintenance is just where do you even get something like that well um, uh, he, the guy that was there working on it said that, you know, like a box store, Home Depot, Lowe's, oh, really? like that would probably have it, but I, I went to Amazon. Okay. Yeah. So I bought a two pack. Should uh, last me a year for like 35 bucks. I'll have to show you the one in the garage, see if it's similar. Okay. And we got a couple of them on different buildings around the... Yeah. Right. And, They're and, easy to put on too. I mean, if, if, yeah. it's, it's the, if it's the same one I'm thinking of. Yeah, I mean, it's just a, it's just a line from the water coming into your house before it ever gets into your house. It's just a pre-filter um, just to kind of get the, the sediment and stuff like that out. Yeah. And then it goes through our water softener and then all that comes into our home. And then of course we've got the, on, on top of that, then we've got the reverse osmosis system under the sink just for the drink of water. So, mm. man, if that water's not clean by the time it hits <laughs> my throat, it's just not going to get clean. It's not going to get clean. <laughs> so anyway, maintain your stuff, like change your, change your filters for your air conditioner, all that kind of stuff. It's, yeah. it's good. So cool, man, well, we're, we're, con- we're pressing on tonight with part two of our, of our series. Yes. The so best of the decade. Last, last week we did what we thought was the best of the decade. Right. Yeah. And if you haven't yet, we, we referenced a, a video that we found on, on YouTube about walking, walking through this old innovations, in, innovations or interventions. We, in, it was the, so the building that was in was innovations East. Okay. And the name of the video is House of Inventions. Okay. So it was kind of playing off of the building that was in. Right. And the gist of the video is it was, you know, Disney Epcot's predictions 
about what the home of the future was going to be like. Yeah. And it was eerily accurate. Yes. Um, and so we thought it would be fun to go through last, last week. What we did is we went through our, you know, our, our, you and I's, we each got, you know, three, our top three, yep. what we thought were like the best in, innovations over the last decade. And, and so in order to, to continue on in that spirit, we wanted to take this week and make our top three predictions. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't you know, 10 years feels like a long time to be predicting stuff. I mean, like it does, you know, well, I mean, when you think about the last 10 years, I mean, so the way technology has traveled mm. over the last 10 years, I mean, we talked about this, the iPhone was invented in 2007. Yes. Right. That's whenever it first came online to where we are now, 12 years, 13 years later mm. is, unbelievable right to see where that phone that didn't have a camera on it now is the first right? one didn't have a camera i don't think so that's boggling it had to have had a camera i know the iP- ipod didn't because so maybe like, that's what i'm thinking of razors like even had cameras on them yeah maybe it did it was it wasn't a very good one i'll, t- I'll put it that way um <laughs> not compared to what we have now for sure no not anywhere close uh, we need to look that up and see if they had a see if they had cameras on i them. know the ipods didn't originally uh, yeah not, the, I- the not, ipods not didn't the, i'm talking about the i'm not talking about the rotary <laughs> the iPod, rotary ipod the iPods. <laughs> i had one of those by the way actually, i actually had two of them um no i'm talking about the full screen ipods i don't think that one did but you're talking about like the eye touches is that yeah, what you, okay. touches, yeah. Yeah, no, I don't think those had cameras. No, I don't think so either. Uh, anyway, nevertheless, to think where, I mean, that technology alone has come in 10 years, to right. think about the exponential increase we're going to get over the next 10 years, is, mm-hmm. is mind, it is mind-boggling. So here's a question I have. I'm not, I mean, like, not to take us way off kilter. Does Apple even make, like, music devices anymore? Like I remember, it was a pretty big deal when like they came out with like the shuffle because it was a little tiny yeah. thing you could clip on your shorts. Yeah, and Microsoft had the Zune. The Zune, right? Do, do they even make? I mean, like I know people make MP3 players. You can still buy iPods. You can still buy iPods. Yeah. Like, are they like iTouches? Is that what, like? Yeah, basically? they're still. They're like you know whatever. Like, really? Yeah. Eighth like they gener- have them? eighth generation or something. Yeah. Yeah. My my wife bought one. Now I don't know. So here's the question that I don't know the answer to. I don't know if like they've made one this year. Or last year, right? But I know my my wife bought the latest generation uh, about a year and a half, uh, about a year ago. Okay, she bought the latest generation, and um, they were still producing them. Hmm. So, I just, but it doesn't seem you, like there would be a market for that anymore. Well, and, and there's not much because if you go to if you go listen to the Apple events, mm-hmm. they're not talking about them. Yeah. So maybe they're not making new ones anymore I, I, anyway but so. they're still available I'm gonna, I'm gonna look into that as well okay so for no reason well i'm just curious i mean like <laughs> be, be, well i mean like you know in, in the spirit of making predictions i mean like no one's really doing anything with like be, because everything's streaming right yeah. i mean like even music is streaming and yep. you've probably got like an amazon account or a spotify account or a pandora account or, or something all of them you know and so like you know it, which I, I imagine is rough on the music industry, but people aren't buying albums. No, they're not. You know, and they're barely buying songs. Yeah. So why? Why would you? So I'm. I, you know, it seems like they they ought to be creating devices that makes music more enticing. Yeah. You know, a higher quality device, or I, I don't know. I don't know either. Who am I? What am I to? <laughs> it's not one of my three. <laughs> no, mine either. So, so what we're gonna do tonight uh, or today is we're going to give our predictions, mm-hmm. the top three predictions from each of us for the next or for this decade, for our current decade, right? The twenties, <laughs> which is weird to say. The roaring twenties. The roaring twenties. That's right. So, so I went first last time. So I think that means that you have to All go right. first this time. So fair um, is fair, Kevin. Okay. All right. Now, um, in in full disclosure, we we made this own kind of disclaimer amongst ourselves. Like, right. these are just predictions. Like, who knows if this is actually going to come true? So oh, they're one hundred percent accurate. Yeah, guaranteed. Well, I, I'm I'm pretty confident in my first one. I'm going to go with um, my one that I'm most confident 
with uh-huh. to the one that I'm least confident with. Oh, okay. Okay, so the one I'm most confident with, I'm just going to put out there, and the reason I'm most confident about this is because we're already starting to see this happen. Mm-hmm. Um, I just predict it is going to go in some pretty cool and maybe scary places, um, and that is self-driving cars. Okay. I, I think we're going to have self-driving cars... Like not just, I mean, they they basically have them now. I mm-hmm. mean, there there are certain road systems that are even being striped, such that the car is reading the stripes. And, right. You know, they're they're and we've had cars that break for themselves for years now, and you know, do all these sorts of things. So, I think we're going to see this technology really take off, right? And not just be something from a um, you know, no pun intended, a test drive type of place right? to something that is full on by the year, you know, 2029, I think we're going to be all, that's going to be the thing. Everybody's got this, you know, this ability to sit back and play on your computer, take right. naps or whatever, while your car drives you from point A to point B. Well, and you're right. I mean, this is already happening. I mean, yeah. the Tesla cars are fully capable of doing this right i mean like they've they've shown it and I don't, I don't know if you're aware of this or not but like there are people making products to hack teslas mm. because the because it's against it's technically against the law for there to be self-driving cars right um and but like most of the teslas on the market right now are fully capable of self-driving yes so what Tesla had to do was to put in a system that requires you to put your hand on the wheel. And I think it's like every two minutes or something like that. Okay. So in, in order to ensure that the driver is engaged in what's going on. So there's these people that have developed these products that you can like basically attach to the steering wheel. Oh man. <laughs> to make it think that your hands are on the wheel okay. and you can literally play on your phone or whatever. Wow. Um, and so like, that's, that's already happening. Yeah. And, and so let me be clear on this. Like, it's not that I necessarily think this is the, the innovation that's going to come. Right. Cause it's already here. My, my real point here is I think it's going to take off. Oh yeah. And I think it's going to be something that we see come to fruition to the point where, you know, just like the, you, you know, the, the house of interventions video that we watched, um, and that we put in the last show, um, those products were already in production, mm-hmm. but I, I don't know what the percentage of of those were. Seventy five percent are are probably things that you have in your home. Yeah, some version of it. Yeah, some version of what they were using there, up to probably seventy five percent. You have a device or a something that that was very similar to what yeah. they were using. And that's kind of my point with this. Like, I think it is going to be something that that everybody winds up adopting, that all of the manufacturers of cars are going to wind up installing mm-hmm. into their vehicles, and you are going to be um, purchasing a vehicle in the next 10 years mm. that drives itself. Not just a Tesla, but, you know, a GM, a Ford, uh, a Honda that's mm. driving itself. Okay. I, 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 I agree. I okay. think it's coming. Yes. Yeah. He agrees. So I, I think it'll probably. I think it's probably going to look a little bit different than what we think it's going to be like, like the, our our concept of driving. Uh, yeah, I think we're definitely going to have it. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. Again, I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know what it's going to feel like. Although yeah. I just think that I, I think the laws are going to change. I think the the road systems are going to have to update themselves on, you know. Even signage is probably going to have certain technology put into it that allows mm. cars to know various things. But also, you know, all the GPS systems are going to become so freaking advanced. Well, I mean, I, I actually heard something the other day. I mean, that's the whole point of 5G getting out. Yeah. So and I'll, I'll, add, I'll add a little appendix to your prediction. Okay. I, actually, I actually think it's only going to be, uh, it, it, at least in the next decade, I think it's only going to be functional in like high metropolitan areas. Okay. Um, I can see that. I mean, for, for a couple of reasons. One, I mean, like they're going to have the infrastructure of like the wireless networks in order for these cars to communicate and, and GPS and all that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, yeah, I mean, I, and, and I think it's going to be a, a easy way to sell it when you can say we can alleviate traffic. Oh yeah. Big time. Cause you're going to eliminate not, rubberneckers and well, yeah. 
when when you can el- virtually eliminate wrecks, yeah, then you eliminate the the traffic log jam yep. that happens. Yeah. So like I think Houston will be an interesting city to see if that actually happens too because it's such a yeah. sprawling metro. It is. Um it's yeah. it's a little weird compared to other big cities. Yeah, I agree. Um okay. Cool. Ready for mine? Yes, sir. So my big prediction over the next 10 years is what I'm what I'm categorizing as smart food. Smart food. Yeah. Okay. So I think I think the way that people interact with their food is is going to be drastically changing. I think it, I mean like it's, it's very similar to your prediction. It's already happening. Sure. Um, and so I, I with with things coming on the market that we continue to see things like Keurig, things like Instapot. Um, and I think I saw one the other day where like they're doing like a, there's like a Keurig version of soft serve ice cream coming where you can have like a really? soft serve in your kitchen. Yeah. Um, I, I think I think a lot of food interaction for people is going to become more and more of that. Yeah. Um, which I don't necessarily think is a good thing. Mm. Um, but I think I think we're going to get to a place. You know, we're going to have this interaction now, and, and and you mentioned this last time about you know how uh, grocery shopping has changed. Like, yeah, you know, you can order it online, yeah, and run to the store and pick it up, or you can just have it delivered, sure, or Amazon can deliver it from Whole Foods, you know. And so, like, I think the way that people are interacting with their food is is just going to drastically change. And yeah. so, like, I think food is going to get smarter. I don't necessarily think it's going to get better. Um. But I, there's a lot of things out there. I mean, even things like DoorDash and, you know, the ways that it, I mean, pretty much any place is delivery these days. Right. right. And and so, uh, you, you know, you, you couple stuff like that um, with ideas of things like the Keurig that you can program to have your coffee right. made right. by the time you wake up in the morning is. But I, I, I could I could foresee a an Amazon type system. You know, where you're meal prepping and your meal prepping is basically clicking on a screen, mm. you know, and then you have a device in your kitchen that basically receives that delivery, prepares the food for you, and you just take it out and eat it. And it, um, it could it could be really fresh. I mean, could be. You, yeah. you could have but, drones delivering your food and then your kitchen preparing it by the time you get home at 630 to right. eat. Right. Yeah. I mean, like if you if you had a you know I don't know a, a, a deposit box for the, your Instapot and they're just basically dropping like a dish in there in your Instapot, you can you know you can either connect to it via Wi-Fi or whatever, yeah. you know, and like hey the food's been delivered. Do you want Instapot to start cooking it so it's ready for? Like I think that's I think that's totally going to happen. Yeah. So that's interesting. I I would I, I I'm with you in that I I can see some. Because there's a lot of great things that happens in a family around cooking, right? That that I think would be lost. Um, but I mean, the convenience of that could also be really, really cool. Yeah. Um, I, what I, what I'm concerned about, well, you, you bring up something. Something I'm really concerned about is just the dumbing down of people yeah. in general. I mean, because no longer is there any use in debating information. Because all we got to do is pick up our device that's next to us, ask Google or Alexa to tell us the answer, and we've got the answer. Um, and, and you know, before before those devices were available and the internet was so readily accessible, mm-hmm. I mean, just sitting around talking about stuff and and trying to figure things out was just right. a different level of of life. Well, I mean, and I think that's true of like simple facts. But like when you start getting like complex facts, right? I mean, and, and I think food is one of those complex facts, right? Like what's the best kind of meat for you? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's a complicated answer. Yeah. yeah. Because it really depends on the person. It's, it's subjective like yeah. in a lot of ways. Well, it's subjective, but then it's also like objective. Depending on like the person. What's your, what's yeah. your health situation? Sure. What's, I mean, like what are you trying to achieve? What, you know, like. Are you allergic to chicken? I mean, like there's yeah. there's all sorts of variables in the answer, and so like the 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 truth or the facts get sort of they're not muddled, but like there's not like a definitive like this is the one. It's more complicated for sure. So, but like which is to me one of the problems with developing a system like that. Which I mean, like but like 
our technology is getting so much more advanced and complex that it's going to be able to, I think, a, a, adopt those characteristics and, and, and be able to tell like, okay, Craig's blood pressure is high. He's not getting enough vitamin C, you know, maybe we need to adjust some things in the diet, oh, Okay, you know? And so I, I don't necessarily think it's going to be us picking the food as much as we're going to, you know, be able to submit, you know, who we are and our vital statistics. I mean, like we're already getting a lot of that stuff through our phones and our watches Yep. and we're, you know, sharing that information and, and for a good reason, mm-hmm. you know, and, and there's some people are really upset about it for privacy stuff and I get that. Um, but this, this is why that kind of thing can be, could be helpful Yeah. in, you know, and one of the, I think one of the benefits of it, you know, if I want to look at it from like the positive side is like, it, it might actually make you eat healthier. Oh yeah. And, and, and part of, Part of eating healthy is knowing the types of ways that your body needs to be fed. Right. And so, and we talked about that in a couple of episodes ago, just that not every diet is for every person, Mm -hmm. but being able to tailor and custom make things uh, based on your own individual needs and your ability to know what those needs are. Yeah. That, that could, that could change a lot of things. Yeah. But can, I mean, can you imagine if like there's a, you know, a device in your home that you're giving, you know, biometric feedback to that's then taking that information, you know, that, you know, it's, it's, it's looking at your sleep patterns. It's looking at your weight. It's looking at your blood pressure. It's looking, I mean, it's looking at your mood, Yeah, you know, and then it's adjusting your diet based on those things. I mean, that, I think that's totally possible. Yeah. I think there's probably people working on it already. I hope so. So, (laughs) but again, I don't know that I like that. I I I love cooking. I think there's, I like interacting with my food. Yeah. And and I I think that there's probably, I I don't know. This is the, the part of, of this conversation that I feel like we have to kind of rein in on some level and and go just because it is available. Doesn't mean that it's got to be adopted. Right. Either. I mean, so I, I think that just because something is available doesn't necessarily mean that that's where you have to go with it. And, and, and one of the things that I have a real, real hard time with is like, we, you know, take the, we talked about the iPhone, take that for example. Like mm-hmm. It's been around for now, uh, coming up on, it's not 13 years old yet. It's still 12 and a half, right? <laughs> yeah. Something like that. It takes, a decent amount of time for a piece of technology to be available Mm -hmm. and people adopt for people to adopt it. And then once it's adopted, there takes there, there's a certain amount of time for that technology to be used before any data can be uh, really taken from that. Right. And then the data takes time to be researched and understood before a statistic can ever come out. Mm. We are just now in the last year getting real hard statistical data on how the iPhone specifically or just smartphones in general are affecting humans and the way that it is, it is changing our just our psyche Mm -hmm. from a depression standpoint, from an anxiety standpoint, from a uh, busyness standpoint, from a distracted standpoint, from a um, just a reclusive type standpoint, all Mm. these sorts of things. Um, Now those are all negative things, right? There's a lot of positive things that you could put on it as well, but we're just now starting to see the data from that. So what's going to be interesting to me is, is if something like what you're talking about becomes available, Mm -hmm. it's going to take a, while before we understand how to interact with it no i mean because i i what i sense right now is i sense technology being one of those things that people are like oh that's awesome let's do it and you buy it and then you like at some point you look back and you go wait a minute like, <laughs> i didn't ever expect to be here with right. this piece of technology and i wish that i wasn't yeah and trying to rein it back in is very difficult and so uh that'll be interesting yeah for sure so all right uh my second one is I think we are going to f- have new and alternative fuel sources that are running both things in our home and our vehicles, okay. and not just electricity. Oh, I, 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 I think that um, I think there's certain limitations that electricity 
um, brings with it. Mm -hmm. I think there's timing, (laughs) Uh, things I, I know that there's way to recharge things. I know that there's, there's, but you know, solar is even part of that. And it's a different energy source than what electricity is, right? Right. Like Ele- you can turn solar into electricity, right? But I think we're gonna find different, um, more efficient fuel sources that are a more, uh, more cost effective, mm-hmm. and I think they're going to be less draining on. Uh, just the environment as a whole. Yeah. And so, you know, right now, most homes are run off of electricity and natural gas. Right. Now, now you've got propane, and you've got solar, and you've got some other things that people are utilizing, but kerosene, kerosene, <laughs> uh, coal. <laughs> um, by and large, though, um, it's electricity and, and natural gas. I think that we're going to see different types of fuel pop up. Um, and, and, and a lot of this in my mind is generated from the from just the knowledge that you know the the EPA has gotten so involved with the way our vehicles are are made, mm-hmm. right? And so, like now, you've got these diesel engines uh, in these big trucks and, and vehicles that um, they have to have certain types of filters on them, and then right. they've got to you know. You've got to put in certain additives in it so that it burns cleaner and all these sorts of things. And I think at some point we've got to get to a point where we go, okay, this is destructive enough that something else has to happen. Well, and like you know, to your point, I think I think they're going to eventually regulate it enough where it's going to be not profitable. Exactly to, I mean, to produce those devices. I mean, we've already we've already found that over the last call it twenty years, um, diesel was way cheaper than gas. Mm-hmm. And now it is never cheaper than gas. No. And, you know, it's weird because like... But more efficient. It is. And and what's weird is like, from what I understand, I don't know that much, okay? It's no. clear, right? <laughs> but my understanding is you make diesel out of the leftover remnants of what's in the bottle of the gas barrel, right? Okay. So you're using... <laughs> you're, you're using leftovers to produce it and it's more expensive, which doesn't necessarily make sense, but, um, it does out there to somebody I know, right, yeah. but either way, I, I just think that we're going to get to a point where the current fuel sources we're using are not efficient enough. They're harmful to the environment and we're going to find new and inventive ways to, um, to fuel the things that we do. And I mean, everything, Everything needs power these days. Mm-hmm. We don't. We live in a very power uh, n- necessitated world, right? Yeah. Everything we have is powered, and so just figuring out what that new source is is going to be interesting. And I think in the next ten years, we're going to have at least something else available. Do you, th- do you think there's a chance that we could miniaturize nuclear? Maybe. I mean, I'll tell you, I'll tell you my theory on this. I think we probably already have the technology to do that, Okay, but that we don't because once we open it up to the public, then it's going to become the, the scary side of nuclear is going to be available to other countries that we don't want to have access to that. Okay. I think that's probably the reason it hasn't happened yet. Sure. Because they haven't figured out how to close that, that loop. Uh, That's Um, an interesting thought. And I, I don't know. I, I really don't know what it's going to be. Because I just, you want to talk about like efficient. Oh, yeah. I mean, it may not be like the most environmentally friendly, but I mean, like for the most part, they've kind of figured out how to minimize that. Well, and we've done that with so many things, right? I mean, so many things that we have in our in our in our lives, we figured out how to make them environmentally OK. I mean, we could say the same thing about plastic, right? I mean. We could say the same thing about burning lots of different things that we burn. Oh, dude, I actually learned some stuff about plastics recently that just freaked me out. Okay. Like, I think we've actually made it, I mean, like, if, if what I heard was true, it's way worse. Is this like the, like the whole McDonald's chicken McNugget thing, like way worse than you really thought it was? <laughs> <laughs> well, like, um, I was listening, there's a, there's this kid that's developed this, like there's, do you know about the floating island in the Pacific? Yeah, yeah. That's the size of Texas? Yeah. It's nothing but plastic. Yeah. I mean, like, that's insane. Yeah. It's not okay. Yeah. So, and apparently the way 
plastics break down, they, they just break down into smaller and smaller pieces. Mm. And there's some, some theories floating around that a lot of the increase that we're seeing in cancer is actually the microplastics that have gotten into our system and are causing inflammation that allows cancer to attach. Mm. There's all kinds of weird stuff about it. I, I don't know if any of it's true. There's smart people who are talking about it and they're scaring the bejesus out of me. Um, yeah, but cause I mean, he was even, I mean like this, I forget the name of the guy. It was, this, it was on the, uh, Tim Ferriss podcast. Okay. And it was, this, uh, it was actually the guy that, uh, originally, uh, developed the, uh, iPod for mm. Apple. Okay. Um, and he's really big into, into, you know, trying to solve the plastics issue. And he was talking about how, uh, the labeling on some things have even allowed them to make it appear as if they're recycled. But it's just all it is. It's like it's new plastic that's recyclable. Oh, okay. Um, and he goes, and that's not helping anything. No. Um, you're just creating more plastic. Right. So anyway, scary, your, scary stuff. What's your number two? <laughs> My number two. Um, this one, I, I so um, I, I think we're going to get um, really in-depth smart pet devices. Okay. Um, and what I mean by that is... Um, you know how like we have like WebMD now? Yeah. Um, I really think because people, people are already okay with like microchipping their dog, microchipping their cat. Yeah. You know, and these are really just like location devices. Yeah. Well, well now, my dog is microchipped. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a free service when we got her spayed. Right. Um, we, we got her microchipped. What, what is interesting and in, at least about the one that we have mm-hmm. is, it's not GPS at all. Right. It is just a way to know whether or not that's my dog. Right. I mean, it's an, it, the microchip contains information. Right. And, and you, there are certain places that can read that chip. Mm-hmm. And if the dog is taken to one of those places, they can read the chip and go, oh, that's Kevin's dog. Let's call him. We have his phone number. That's all that my microchip does. But to your point, mm-hmm. It's it's not only available; it's very common for right. that to be yes. in dogs these days. Yeah, so I, I think it's I think it's going to go many many steps further. I think I think we're going to have uh, devices that we you know basically put on our pets. They give biometric feedback data, mm. um, you know, so like checking their heart rate, checking you know, all that all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, kind kind of like the way that we put on Apple watches, and they can do like ECGs and is that what it, ECGs? Yeah, mm-hmm. um, and so you could almost, instead of going to the vet, you know, you can connect virtually to a veterinarian office and that, that vet's going to be able to get all the diagnostic data that they need in order to, you know, determine, okay, do you actually need to come in or, you know, what, what are the other symptoms that are going on? And I can just diagnose right here because I have all this information right in front of me. That would be beautiful. It it would. Um, so I, I, I think, I think that's coming. I mean, I think because people, you know, I think, you're going to guys are going to be develop guys and gals are going to be developing that technology because there's, I think there's a market for people who, you know, want to take better care of their cats and dogs. Sure. Um, but, but honestly, vet visits are very difficult, right? I mean, they're, they're, I mean, if you, especially if you have multiple animals and taking the time out of your schedule mm-hmm. to go to the clinic and it takes, you know, and it's a pain because you never know if your dog's going to attack some cat or exactly. So I, I think this is, I think, you know, the reason I'm predicting this, I think it's actually good for the veterinarian business. Sure. You know, they can, they can actually, they probably be able to see more, uh, more clients. Yeah. People are going to, because those appointments will probably cost a lot less because, you know, it's just going to be cheaper to have those appointments, you know, when you're not, you're not in a brick and mortar type of, uh, establishment anymore right i mean they, they probably have an office but it's not the, the scale right that that it would be currently yeah I, I talked to a gal the other day that she was using some sort of online doctor service mm. because she was out of state in yeah. colorado um and something happened to her where she was like i know what it was so i just got on the computer i there was a doctor on the other sh- side of the screen i told him my symptoms i told him you know what my temperature what my vitals were he told me he concurred with my di- my own diagnosis of what I thought and wrote me a prescription and I picked it up at the hotel. Oh, that happens all the time. We yeah. do that with our own family now. So, and today. Like, but it was, and she was like, it was crazy cheap. 
Oh yeah, I mean, so so with uh, th- I think she this, said it cost her like fifty bucks. So so we with our insurance that I've got mm-hmm. through my job, we also I think they pay it's it's something stupid like seven dollars a person to get this uh, like a teledoc service. Right. It cost me zero copay, zero <laughs> zero dollars to call into the doctor. And yeah, I can send them pictures and we can just talk on the phone or we can do a, a, a video face to face and yeah, they can go. Yeah, this is what it is. I'll, I'll write you this and you go pick it up. Awesome. It is so awesome. Right. Yeah. No, I, th- I think that's exactly what's going to happen because I mean like, you know, veterinarians are regulated. They're not nearly as regulated as people doctors. Right. Um, you know, they're, but they're, I mean like they're highly regulated. Sure. But if we can do that with people. Yeah. It's Why not? A, yeah. And the, and the, the technology's there. Yeah. So. No, I agree. Okay, cool. I, I'm with you. I like it. Yeah. All I'd right. I'd even use it. <laughs> oh, yeah. We would, too. Absolutely. Okay, so here here's my last one. <laughs> and this is the one that's um, a little far out. <laughs> <laughs> Pun definitely intended. Oh, okay. So, um, I, I think that we're going to see space vacationing. Oh, okay. Become a thing. I think we're going to see people vacationing to the moon, for example. Oh. Um, I, I think that I mean, we're, we're already seeing like Virgin, Virgin is planning on this. I mean, yes. like they, they've already sold tickets. Yes. On, on having some opportunities for that. And it's a ridiculous amount of money. I think it was like 120,000. Yes. Um, and, and, and you're there for very limited amount of time. Yeah. Um, and but that's just going to space. That's just going to space. Yeah. Like I, I think that we're going to see some sort of habitable place mm-hmm. on the moon that we're going to be able to go to and spend a night, for okay. example, and just have the ability to be there and be on a completely different planet, so to speak. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a moon. I realize. okay, people don't send us emails. I know the moon is not a planet. Okay. <laughs> but it you know it's a completely different foreign type of place to us yeah um you'd be just as excited to be on pluto exactly exactly <laughs> um which thankfully is again a planet is it a planet again yes uh, make up your mind it's, it's been reinstated Science. yeah um so i i i think in in and whether or not it's the moon or whether it's you know just just some other uh, space station, mm-hmm. you know, that you get to go to and, and, and do that kind of thing. I, I think that people are intrigued enough about space right? that uh, we're going to get to a point where, I mean, people are outlandish with the things they already do. Yeah. I mean, just the, the types of vacations that you hear some people wind up taking and things that they do on these vacations. Yeah. Like I, I had a, I had a, a friend, uh, he, he was a pilot, he was a private pilot for a banker. And he came home regularly telling me things that his, uh, his boss had him fly him to this, that, or the other. And he told me one day he came home. He's like, dude, you'll never guess what I just did. And I was like, no, you're probably right. I won't. He's like, you know, you ever watch shark week? Mm. I'm like, yeah, I've watched shark week. Who didn't watch shark week? Uh, and he was like, so, so, you know, like the great white episodes where they like get down, you know, they put people down in the cages and, and, you know, they, they put the, the fish in there and they come up and they're like biting at the cage and stuff. I was like, yeah. He's like, I did that. <laughs> so you did what? He's like, yeah, I had the chain mail on and everything. Oh my gosh. I was like, Why? And he was like, because we were in South Africa and my boss wanted to do it. And he asked me if I wanted to. I said, sure. <laughs> and so he he goes vacationing to swim with great white sharks. Awesome. Like the the, the risk taking that that winds up being right yeah. is just astronomical. And so I, I think that we're going to see completely different side of travel. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and whether it's space or not, I think that there's a lot of inventive ways that travel is going to go crazy. Mm. Um, and we're, we're, we're seeing things like underwater hotels, which I up. think are awesome. Yeah. I mean, but again, like there, there's a significant risk to doing something like that. Right. I don't care. Um, do <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm kind of with you. Uh, but I, I just, I think that we're going to find that there's, there's some pretty cool opportunities to mm. vacation differently than we're currently vacationing. Mm. So I'm, 
I'm, I'd be with it. Yeah. Yeah. Bring it on. Yeah. I, I, I don't think I could ever afford it. Um, oh, but come on, Kev. Uh, well, I mean, surely it'll be affordable someday, right? The Kev of the next decade could. Yeah. <laughs> yeah when I'm 70. New, not... new and improved Kevin yeah. could do this. <laughs> you got well, it. I guess if they, uh, you know, the next decade they get me super healthy, then. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I'll go up to space. Why I'm not? healthy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that, that was the one that I told you I was like least confident least about. Least confident. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually pretty confident in my number three. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll see if it happens. Though. My, my number three is uh storage container homes oh dude okay um uh, go ahead and talk yeah so uh have, have you seen uh ready player one yes okay so you know how like yeah that that whole you know i i think we're gonna i think we're gonna start seeing more and more mm-hmm. of that yeah um and not just because and i think i think initially it's going to be because it's kind of the hip thing to do sure but I think it's actually going to come out of practicality. Okay. Um, I, I think it's going to be, you know, that's going to be the conscientious. That's that's the way you're going to be able to virtue signal your your conscientious house building. Yeah. But it's actually very practical. Sure. Um, and it, it's not a bad way to build a house. I mean, they're super structurally sound. They're very safe. I mean, yeah. they're like hurricane resistant. I mean, like you put them together right, they're not going anywhere. Right. Um, and, you know, and they last forever. Sure. Um, so I, I think it's going to be more and more of a trend. And I also think it's going to happen because I, I'm actually I'm actually anticipating a, a big glut in the real estate market in the next at least five years. Okay. They're, we're just building too much right now. Yeah. And there's not enough people buying. Mm. We're, I mean, we're the, the generation that we're building them for is really not interested in owning homes. That's true. Um, and, and so there's a, there's a huge, uh, there's a lot of people building apartments right now. Um, and I think people are going to get tired of that model. And so I think, I think some people are going to catch on and building shipping container homes is actually pretty cheap. Yes, it is. Um, and so I think I think when the traditional real estate market kind of, you know, takes a tumble, which it traditionally does. I mean, it always does. Yeah. I mean, it goes up and down just it, like everything else. It ebbs and flows. So when it goes down again, I think one of the things that's going to bring it back up is shipping container homes. Okay. So I, we just down the road, uh-huh. um, th- we have a shipping container car wash. Yeah. That you they know. just finished building. Yeah, and, and it's it's pretty interesting, mm-hmm. and and I think it's catchy. I think that's one of the reasons they did it. Yep. Right. Um, but um, to to your point, my my sister and her husband they they sold their house and they moved out to a lake um, area that they owned a little bit of land, and their goal was to build a metal home. Right. Like a Mueller type of home. We, we, we had them on the, on our show not too long ago. And I went out to dinner with her not too long ago. And she was like, so yeah, I, I don't think we're going to do the metal building mm-hmm. thing anymore. And she's like, really? Why? And she's, it's just kind of more expensive than we originally thought. And just not quite as practical as what we were thinking. So I think we're going to do a shipping container home. Yeah. I said, Whoa. What? Like I'd <laughs> never heard of this. Yeah. Um, and she was like, "Yeah, uh, we've been looking into it, and a lot of people are doing it, and they are. We think we can build something that is, um, just as big, and and they're not talking about anything huge. They're talking like fifteen hundred square feet. Right. They're not looking yeah. for anything massive. Uh, something that is a lot more cost efficient." They can do most of the work themselves, mm-hmm. and it's just—I mean, like you said, structurally, you you don't get anything stronger than steel, right? That's what they're made out of, uh-huh. and so, uh, in I mean, they're making these things two, three, four stories high, and it doesn't matter. Well, you if know? you've ever seen them on a ship, I mean, they stack them eight and ten high. Yes, they do. And, like they don't have any problem. No, none. And so, it it. it Whenever she was telling me about it, I was like blown away. Mm -hmm. And then I started like doing some, just some one-off research moments where I'm like, I'm just going to look at this. I looked at some of these houses. I'm like, that, that actually looks really good. Yeah. And you paint them all the same color. You can have balconies that like you can position them in certain ways to where you've got a natural balcony, Mm -hmm. you know, like natural overhang, you know, between one of the stories and the other. And, um, Anyway, just a really cool concept and and I don't I don't know that it's for me. Yeah. But it's an interesting idea. Yeah. 
And it, well, there's actually uh, not not far from here in the woodlands. There's a four story shared office complex that just went up. Mm. Uh, if sometime you want to see, it, I can take it over there and see it. But it's a, it's a giant L shape and it's nothing but shipping containers. Wow, it's a really cool looking office place yeah. too. Um, so, uh, I, I, you know, it's it's been going on for a while. And like obviously, I mean, like if you went and searched it, you can find lots of examples of being, people have been doing this for a while. Yeah, this is not like a new thing. Sure, I just actually think it's going to become more widespread. Um, right. And for the, for one of the, one of the big reasons that you mentioned, because, you know, you're going to get a smaller footprint. And I think that, I think, again, that's going to be something where people can sort of, Hey, I'm doing, I'm not using as much space as you right. are because I don't have as much stuff as you do. Sure. I mean, like it's, you know, it's all that kind of mentality, which is not a bad mentality. Right. You know, we don't need as much stuff as we think we do. Right. Um, and we don't, you know, need as much space as we think that we do on, on our living spaces. I'm a big land guy, if you know. Right. I'd be perfectly happy with a thousand square feet in the middle of 50 acres. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, it, it opens up different types of opportunities. Yeah. And, and one of the opportunities it opens up is in a, uh, inexpensive housing mm-hmm. that is every bit what you and I are living under now as far as a roof, a safe place. Um, you but, can, you can bury them too. Yeah, I know. And that's, I mean like it, it which you, you think about like the option for a basement, you know, wh- whether or not you have a buried home mm-hmm. or whether or not it's just a basement. Right. Like it's a completely sound. Yeah. Basement, you know? Well, not only that, I mean like once, once it goes subterranean, I mean, you can really increase your energy efficiency. Oh Yeah. Oh yeah. A lot of, a lot of people have done that. And you know, just the, I mean, you, you have a different level of insulation. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, here's, here's one of the other things that I've seen people do with some of these homes is because they're made out, out of steel. Yeah. Um, they can put sod roofs on them Yeah. or garden roofs on yeah. them, which increase the energy efficiency yeah. of the building. That's right. You know, you put like a grass, a grass roof on it, mm-hmm. you know, you've got that extra layer Yep. and it actually deflects sunlight and sure. it produces oxygen and you know, a food source possibly could be could be growing <laughs> vegetables up there that's right mm. oh man well i don't know i mean it'll be interesting you know instead of having you know trailer parks you got shipping container parks possibly i, I think it's better uh, well yeah it would probably be better and honestly they would cost as much yeah uh, yeah they probably would be a similar cost so. but the, but the but the structural integrity of those things is better way better yeah i mean especially in in areas that are that have you know natural disasters like tornadoes or floods or hurricanes you know different things like that yeah so. yeah so anyway um we we would love to hear from you guys if you guys have some predictions for the next 10 years we'd love to hear what you guys are thinking on the horizon uh did you think uh maybe we should put it put it to a vote as to who thought what the audience thought who had a better list okay yeah or or yeah better list yeah maybe even the best one the best overall who, who, who do you think had the most accurate list okay that could that could be an interesting one so. and and in 2029 we will come back and revisit this episode absolutely <laughs> yeah. Dude, we're podcasting in 10 years oh that'd be crazy <laughs> that would be crazy we need to at least have some interns by then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. So what else? What else? Anything else, Kevin? I, I think that covers it. I, I just really appreciate people downloading this episode and I uh, hope you hope you enjoyed it. Should be fun. Uh, just to kind of talk about, you know, what do you think? What do you what do you think stuff like this is going to go in the future? I, I think it's interesting. Um, and who knows? No, none of us know unless you're. You know, one of those people that's already developing this technology. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've got some, and we've got some other fun uh, interviews coming up pretty quick. We got a, we got a, I think we're like two months booked out, man, with uh, with guests at this point. Uh, so we've got some really cool interviews coming up. But then in February, uh, we're going to be doing a new series called "Getting Out of the House." Getting out of the house. That's right. So we're going to be, we're doing, we're going to do a whole. I think we're doing three interviews on nothing but travel. Yeah, and so we're going to be bringing you guys some really cool. Uh, content about travel uh, over those over those three interviews. So yeah. if you, if you have any uh, suggestions, if you have any questions about uh, travel, uh, send them us send them our way, right? So we can uh, prepare our guests for the uh, the intensity of the question. <laughs> yep. So uh, go ahead if you haven't already subscribe, uh, click click that uh, that notification. 
Make sure you get all of our episodes each and every week. We're here on Tuesdays. Uh, thank you for being loyal to us. Tell us uh, what you think with a review and a rating on iTunes. That would be fantastic. Tell your friends about us. And until then, we'll see you next time. See you.